Okay, to start with, let's write down everything we know. We know that n is equal to 1.00, and we know that it's a monotonic ideal gas, so F is 3. The temperature at point 0.1 is 300 kelvins, at point 0.2 is 600 kelvins, and at point state 3 is 455 kelvins. To start with, we're asked to calculate the heat flow, the work done, and the change in internal energy going from 1 to 2. Well, going from 1 to 2, the volume's not changing, so that immediately tells us that the work is equal to 0. Now, we can either calculate the heat using the CV case, or we can ca calculate the change in internal energy. Let's do the change in internal energy. The change in internal energy is equal to F on 2 NR delta T. So in this case, we've got 3 over 2 times 1 times 8.314. Now the final temperature is 600. The initial temperature is 300. So that's the change in temperature there. So the change in internal energy is 3741 joules. Let's just write it on our diagram. Now our first law tells us that the change in internal energy is the same as the heat flow plus the work done. So Q is equal to 3741 joules as well. Okay, next we're asked about path 2 to 3. And we're told this is adiabatic. So adiabatic tells us straight away that Q is equal to 0. Okay, now it would be hard to work out the work because we need to work out the area under this curve. We could do it because we do have an equation for the slime, PV to the gamma, and we could use 3 to work out what gamma was. But that's hard. It's much easier to work out the change in internal energy. So the change in internal energy, we just need to substitute into this equation again. We've got the change in internal energy is equal to 3 over 2 times 1 times 8.314 times the final temperature, 455. 1 is the initial temperature. Solving that on your calculator, you should end up with minus 1,808 joules. So the change in internal energy is minus 1,808 joules. And so that tells us that the work done will be the same as the change in internal energy, minus 1,808 joules. Okay, we expect it to be negative as this is an expansion. Okay, now we need to do it going from 3 to 1. Okay, to work out the change in internal energy, we can once again substitute into this equation. 3 over 2 times 1 times 8.314 times the final temperature 300 minus 455. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with minus 1,933 joules. So this is equal to minus 1,933 joules. Now it's actually not easy to work out the work for this case because we don't know what this pressure is. We haven't been told the scale on this axis. So what we can do is work out the heat. This is the constant pressure case. So Q is equal to NCP delta T. And this is 1.0. CP is equal to R plus CV, which is R plus F over 2R times the change in temperature. So the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, so F is 3, R is 8.314. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with Q is equal to minus 3,222. And now we can work out the work just using the first law of thermodynamics. We know that the change in internal energy is equal to the work done plus the heat added. In this case, the heat's removed. And so that gives us work is equal to 1,286 joules. Okay, so that's the first nine parts. We were then asked to do it for the cycle, so going from 1 to 2 to 3 and back to 1. Now since we end up at the same state, at the same temperature, we know that for the cycle, the change in internal energy is equal to 0. 
let's just check that we can add each of these internal energies together we end up with 370 3741 minus 1808 minus 1933 when we do that do indeed add, end up with zero so this would have actually been an alternative way to calculate this last change in internal energy okay for the cycle q the heat flow we just have to add up each of our heat flows so seven three thousand seven hundred forty one this one zero minus three thousand two hundred and twenty two this gives us 519 joules and now the work done we'd expect these two to cancel out because of the first law of thermodynamics to give us zero but let's just check we can add up the work done on along each path minus 1808 there's none here and here there's 1286 which gives us minus 522 very close. We'd expect these to be the same. They're just going to be slightly off because of dropping decimal places and things along the way. So they should really be the same. Okay, so that's for the cycle. Okay, we were then told that we can assume that the pressure at point 1 is 1.00 atmospheres and we were asked to calculate the pressure and volume at point 2. So this is a constant volume case so the volume is not actually going to change so if we calculate the volume at 1 that will tell us the volume at 2 so just using the ideal gas law PV is equal to NRT we have V is equal to NRT on P 1 1 so this is 1 times 8.314 times the temperature at 1 which was 300 over the pressure at 1 1 1.01 times 10 to the 5 solving that on the calculator we end up with 0 0.0247 meters cubed and the volume is not changing so this is also the volume at 2. Okay now we need to calculate the pressure at 2 so we can just use the ideal gas law the pressure at 2 will be equal to nr times the temperature at 2 over the volume at 2 substituting in that's 1 times 8.314 times 600 all over the volume at 2 which is our we've calculated over here as 0 0.0247 solving that on the calculator we get 2.02 times 10 to the 5 pascals which is equal to 2 atmospheres so because we've doubled the temperature we've actually doubled the pressure as well everything else was kept constant and then we're asked to calculate the pressure and the volume 4.3. Well, it's got the same pressure, so the pressure is equal to 1 atmosphere. And then we can just use the ideal gas law to get the volume. Volume is equal to nRT over the pressure, which is equal to 1 times 8.314 times 455 over 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with 0 0.0375 meters cubed. So that's the volume at point 3. So that looks a bit of a mess, but we've solved it all now. Obviously, in an exam, you'd be wanting to label them as the answers to A, B, C, and D. But it's always a good idea to write what you know on the diagram.